Vice-Chancellor, members of the university, distinguished guests, I'm deeply honored by the honorary degree that has been conferred on me. I thank the university for this mark of distinction, of which I am immensely proud, and Professor Goldman for his very kind words. Today's world, my world, faces enormous challenges. From shortage of sustainably produced energy, food, and clean water, to climate change, environmental degradation, and mass migration driven by global inequalities. Tomorrow's world, you, you graduates of the university, will require the application of science and mathematics to drive innovations in technology and engineering at a pace and scale to match the immensity of these global challenges. Where and who are the people with the ideas that will change the world for a better tomorrow? In good part, they will be you and people like you, graduates of technological universities, <coughs> digitally savvy, mathematically and scientifically literate, and crucially, equipped with the practical business and problem-solving skills that will make you and them the employers, executives, and entrepreneurs of tomorrow. Your university is a global leader in this endeavor. As founder chair of the World Technology Universities Network, your vice chancellor has led the university in forging links with technology universities across the world. As well as developing courses in this university, which address the urgent need for more technically trained graduates in the UK and indeed in the global workforce. The Vice Chancellor is one of the uh, distinguished individuals I have the honor to have on the board of the Science Museum Group, which I chair. And we, the University of Bradford and the Science Museum Group have very similar missions. Ours, the Science Museum Groups, is to build science capital in individuals and society by lighting a spark of wonder at the achievements of the past at the same time as we encourage ambition to build for a better future. I think the Vice Chancellor and I both particularly applaud the plan to create a technician's gallery at the Science Museum in London at the group's railway museums in York and Shildon, we, ex we celebrate the role of engineering in making the modern world. At our museum in Manchester, we explore the origins of the first industrial revolution and the technologies that would enable the second industrial revolution, prominent among which will be artificial intelligence, AI. How fitting then it was that it was at our Manchester Museum only yesterday that Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, announced that Alan Turing, the father of AI, would be the face on the new polymer 50 pound note. The other museum in the Science Museum Group is, as has already been mentioned by Professor Goodman, Bradford's very own National Science and Media Museum, just down the road in Little Horton Lane, where we explore the technology and science underlying light, sound, and image creation. We always work, we, the Science Museum Group, always work uh, closely with the University of Bradford, and this uh, coming a uh, few days, we will be working particularly closely in the annual Bradford Science Festival, which opens, I think, on the 18th, featuring this year the themes of space travel, 50th anniversary of the moon landing, caring for the environment, I'm afraid always topical, and my own subject, chemistry. 
this is the international year of the periodic table for reasons I will not detain you by explaining. But rather, thank you, Vice Chancellor, for the honor you have accorded me. And may I wish you and the university, and particularly all the graduates, all continuing success in all your endeavors. Thank you. <laughs>